Hey YouTube, Omar here coming at you with an early morning video. It's 8.43 a.m. Eastern Time. And, um, yeah, so I just wanted to get one of the videos out of the way that I need to make because I, I'm, I have a lot of videos on my list I need to make. So let's just get this one because this is, a, this is a good one. This is a happy one. And this is the recap of the Washington Huskies upsetting number 8 Stanford at home. So let's get right into what I'm going to do this year for my recaps. Of course, this is my first real recap video. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give every group grades, and let's start with the offensive line. And I give them a C-. minus. Not a good game from the, our offensive line. But the only reason why I wouldn't give them an F is because we ran the ball effectively. Remember, uh, every time we pass, drop back for a pass, unless it was a short, quick screen pass, even if Keith Price was getting blasted, it was not. Hey, let me fix it. It was not um, good for Price. He was wobbling around. But you can't forget that the run game was really a, was really working. Bishop Sankey, as I see, 20 carries, 144 yards, 7.2 a carry. So. You can't you can't miss that uh, out on that part, and who knows how much of that was just Bishop Sankey himself. All right, now let's go to quarterback and Keith Price. I will give him a B in this game. Why he was able to manage the game even with all the pressure, and they had to re redo their play calling because they couldn't have any time. He didn't have any time to drop back and load up. Uh, he finished 19 of 37, 177 yards, averaging only 4.8 yards per catch. So that shows you, shows you how short the passes had to be uh, for a touchdown and a pick. Yes, we've seen better games out of Keith Price, but we this was a this was a tough one. His stats are gonna take a hit in these next couple weeks, but I think against Oregon he has a chance to maybe spread the field, maybe have some time, maybe get some linemen back and uh, make a difference. Now, let's go to running backs, and I give them an A. Well, it wasn't really Kendall Taylor or Desmond Petty I give an A, but Bishop Sankey. All year, we have not been able to run the ball until Portland State game. We ran the ball effectively, but I was just thinking, whatever. It's just Portland State. No big deal. I mean, it's not going to be translated into our next game against Stanford. I was wrong. Bishop Sankey, as I said, 20 carries, 144 yards, and a touchdown, including the play that kind of got us going and saved our game. We were down 13-3, 4-1, it to, needed it to stay in the game, and he ran, runs at 61 yards for a touchdown. Uh, I think it was kind of the element of surprise because Stanford didn't think we were going to run a play before the end of the third quarter. It was the last play of the third quarter, and we snapped the ball with like a half second left. So, A for Bishop Sankey. Good job. Uh, now, Washington receiving uh, the, the, the wide receivers. I have to give them um, a, a B, and it's pretty much all Case and Williams. He had 129 of the 177 receiving yards. This guy is great. I think he's going to be one of the top wide receivers in the nation next year as a junior. Um no one else really had much much effect. Austin Ferry Jenkins only had two catches for ten yards. That's rare. But Case and Williams saved the day. Ten catches, a hundred a hundred and twenty nine yards, and he had the touchdown that gave us the win. Now let's go to the defensive side of the ball. Let's start with the defensive line. And the defensive line I'll have to give uh, maybe a C as well. Because they were kind of the opposite of Stanford, Stanford's line. Basically, Stanford's line. Um, I mean, basically, basically our line. Hold on, a second. I'm sick. Man. Basically, our our offensive line could not run the ball. I mean, we could run the ball, but we could, but we could run block, but we could not pass block. Uh, our defensive line could not get to the passer. On on pass plays, which is, I we I always think it's a it's a key to get pressure on a quarterback. But Nunes wasn't that great anyway, so maybe it wasn't a key. I was wrong there. But they did stop the run unbelievably well. Um, Stephon Taylor, remember this is a guy coming off I think 150 something yards rushing against a USC team. He had 21 carries for 75 yards. They did not count us on the ground at all. I'm looking trying to do some math here. 
They had 65 rushing yards. Last year, they had over 400 against us. That is a humongous difference. Give credit to Justin Wilcox. This defensive coordinator from Tennessee is the real deal. Um, now for our linebackers, again, linebackers, B, what can I say? They they covered pretty well. I mean, they had some matchups. With, the only reason why I don't give them an A is because there's a lot of catches by Zach Ertz, the Stanford tight end. He had six for 106. Uh, and that's sometimes that's the linebackers not being able to cover him or being mixed up. Um, but over overall, a pretty a pretty good job there. And again, stopping the run, which was the main thing we had to do in this game, knowing. And I said, you know, we've got to make Josh Nunes beat us, and that's what we did, and he didn't beat us. Uh, and finally, for our inner, for our defensive backs. Desmond Trufant had a game to remember. They they were talking about Desmond Island on on ESPN, like Reese Davis and them. The guys calling the game, Jesse Palmer, and uh, he was having a great game. He had the pick that sealed the deal. Uh, as for that, their receivers didn't have much. Ty Montgomery dropped a couple deep passes, uh, but yeah, not much at all and that's why I give our DBs and B in this game and I think our overall offense a B our overall defense an A our defense won us this game Stanford scored 13 points and their only touchdown came on a pick six by the DN when he read the uh, little quick dink screen pass and took it to the house uh, that's when I thought the game was over, but it wasn't. So yeah, defense gets an A, offense gets a B, and I am so excited for this team right now. We are in the rankings at number 23, and we travel to number 2 Oregon this weekend at 10.30 on ESPN. I wonder how that one's going to go. Hopefully, again, it's not a blowout, but I'll be back to preview that game later. Um, as for later videos, today I'm going to try to make a video about like 8 o'clock, so the games will have already started, but I'm going to make my... As I said, I'm going to make a video now every day uh, until the season ends with with the uh, MLB playoff race. And there's two games to go now, and it's getting heated up. And also, I still have to make uh, NFL wrap-up week four and my Giants wrap-up. So I'll see you guys later for those videos at some point.